So I was approached by a company called Neo Eco to do an airbrush reveal. They sent me two entry level gravity feed airbrushes to try out and feature in a video, the NCT SJ83 and SJ81. I agreed to do an unbiased review along with a tutorial and unboxing. Now I'm not exactly an airbrushing expert, I've had the same cheap master airbrush for 8 years now, and I primarily use that for top coats and occasionally priming. That's the only airbrush I really have to compare these to. This video kind of forced me to make some changes to my airbrushing process that I've been putting off for a while, but we will get to that later. As you can see, you get a lot of stuff in these kits. Aside from the airbrush, they both come with three sets of nozzles and needles, a few removable cups, a dropper, a quick connect hose coupler, and an o-ring set. The SJ81 on the right also comes with two different needle caps, an air hose, a cleaning kit, and a moisture trap. These sets are really geared towards people who are brand new to airbrushing. The main difference between these two airbrushes is the nozzle type. The SJ83 on the left has a larger nozzle that doesn't screw into the body, like a traditional airbrush has. Instead it nestles in between the cap and the needle, which I think is a pretty nice design with one kind of major flaw. The SJ81 on the right has a traditional screw-on nozzle. Neo Eco has some pretty great diagrams of these nozzles on their product listings. If you're an airbrush noob, don't be intimidated by the many tension knobs. The one in the front acts as a secondary way to adjust your air pressure. The knob in the middle adjusts the trigger tightness, and the one in the back acts as a trigger limiter. I decided to just jump right into using these and see what kind of paint job I could achieve. In this video, I'll be painting up some models and terrain for the game Idols of Torment. I wanted these models to have some dramatic lighting effects, so I primed them black and shot a gray primer over them to get a sort of dramatic spotlight effect. For the Lost models, which are the game's wandering objectives, I went with a monotone blue color scheme, giving them a tormented spectral look. I was having some spattering issues with the primer, I'll get to that later on as well. I went back and forth building up the lights and darks to get some high contrast. I had to do a bit of dry brushing with white paint on the Lost models to get that spotlight effect. For the idols, I'm painting up the Scorn. For these models, I tried to get a Zenithal Prime with the airbrush, again having some spattering issues there. Oh, God. I airbrushed Cloudburst blue around the bases, leaving a lot of overlap around the model's legs. Then I went in with some Skeleton Brown on everything else. I layered Goth skin over that sporadically to add some bloody, fleshy tinges here and there. Next I painted the chains with polished silver. No way was I going to attempt to airbrush that on. And finally I airbrushed some blood red on their gory torsos. For the candles I just used red paint and zealot yellow over white. For Idols of Torment it's recommended that you use round bases for the terrain. I didn't film the crafting process for these but I am really happy with how they came out. This is just going to show a portion of the painting process. Super simple, a dry brushed zenithal prime. Then a couple different colors blended together with an airbrush for the undertones, and black ink sprayed over top of that to join everything together. For the torches I painted them white, and again used zealot yellow for the flame, letting that color spill over around the light source. If you want to learn more about this process, check out Black Magic Craft, the creator of the game. He has a few videos for his recommended terrain process for Idols of Torment. Here's what I was able to achieve with these right out of the box. It almost feels like I could end the video here, but it wouldn't be much of a review, would it? I wanted to address some of the issues I had with these airbrushes. And while I'm doing that, we're going to paint up a second batch of idols. Because I need the practice. One of my biggest pain points was how these self-centering nozzles are hard to clean once they get clogged up. Due to the way they're designed, there isn't really an easy way to clean out debris on the inside of the tip. You're better off just avoiding clogging altogether, which is the case with any airbrush, but man did I have a heck of a time trying to get footage of this process while keeping the paint from drying out inside the nozzle. To combat the clogging and the previously mentioned spattering that I was having issues with, I bought some flow improver and added a few drops to each cup of paint. Thinning the paint really helped with most of the products I was using, but not with the gray surface primer, which spattered horribly and continued to clog the airbrush. And it's clogged up again. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, this thing gets clogged up really easily, and it's just impossible to clean out. I gotta say the surface primer might be partially to blame here. I came to the conclusion that my white and gray surface primers were not airbrush friendly and tried using white paint over the black primer instead and that worked. 
The flow improver really helped me get the right viscosity and not have to constantly worry about the paint drying out. I've always been a thin my paints with water kind of guy and uh, that usually works but it's nice to have a specially formulated airbrush medium. Some of the o-rings refused to seat properly like the one in this leaky quick connect coupler. I don't know if you can hear that or not but it's leaking air here. For that I just used some Teflon tape, easy enough. There we go, problem solved. I also wanted to note how small the paint chamber is on these airbrushes compared to my old master brush. I think that makes them harder to clean out, but maybe that's just me. The holding angle is a lot steeper on my old airbrush, which I kind of prefer, for miniature painting at least. Personally, I like to aim the airbrush downward, and the design of the Neo Eco is makes that a little harder to do. But I will say that Neo Eco does have a similar model to this master airbrush. The biggest issue I had was just getting the SJ81 to work. It wouldn't even spray cleaning solution consistently. Until I tried using the 0.2 millimeter needle with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle, that was the only way I could get it to function normally. I may have gotten a defective airbrush. I'm confident that Neo Eco would have sent me another one out, but I don't really have the time to wait for that, and I definitely liked the nozzle design on the SJ83 a lot better. I would recommend that one either way. As long as you can keep it from getting clogged up, it's a pretty good design. Properly cleaning out the airbrush after each cup of paint is essential. Also, just figuring out which products to avoid. If you're having issues with clogging, try thinning the paint, and if that doesn't work, just move on to a different product. They also sent me this cleaning pot. You can really see the particulate just go right through this thing. Can't say I'm really impressed with that. In future videos, you're probably going to see me use the backflow technique to clean my airbrush. I think that would have helped with the clogging issues I was having. There's a channel called Impending Duff that has a pretty good video on that. I'll link to that down below. Also, proper ventilation is essential. I was in the process of upgrading my studio and I didn't really have a good way to vent the airbrush spray for the first batch of models in terrain. I was dealing with some serious particulate plumes, and that's just no good. I ended up setting up a cheap air purifier as a temporary solution. I just made sure to spray as close to that as possible so it would suck up the paint. So yeah, as you can see, most of the issues that I was having weren't even really airbrush related. It was more just about me improving my process and using the proper products for airbrushing. It is something I want to get better at, and uh, the only way to do that is practice. So with most of the issues addressed, I decided to try painting up a second group of idols. I was really trying to work on my pressure control with the second batch, and with a properly thinned paints, I definitely noticed a difference. For a budget-friendly entry-level airbrush, the control is pretty good. I found myself removing the needle cap while airbrushing because the paint would just gather up on it and drip off. I pretty much just use the cap for needle protection while I'm storing the airbrush. I don't think these airbrushes are great for detail work on a miniature scale, but for base coating, blending, and blocking out sections of color, they work just fine. One nice thing about the SJ81 is it comes with a detailed instruction manual, which has a uh, troubleshooting section if you aren't familiar with airbrushes. If you're having issues, it'll probably help you figure out what's going on and address it. So here's the second batch. Is it going to win any awards? Uh, probably not, but uh, hey, it's going to look pretty great on the tabletop. If you're considering giving airbrushing a try, I would highly recommend getting a budget airbrush like one of these before dropping a lot of money on a high-end model. You might be blown away by the results. <laughs> thanks to Neo Eco for sending me these airbrushes to test out, and a big thanks to my patrons. If you want to support the channel, becoming a Patreon supporter is a great way to do that. As always, have a great day, and I will see you later.